Hey, what's up guys? Hope you're doing well. Um, today's lesson is an introductory lesson on solving equations. And we're going to soon find out you've already been solving equations, but you might not have realized it. So here we go. Let's get started. Let me share my screen with you and we will go through this lesson. You have these handouts already and it, they are called Intro to Solving Equations. So go ahead and follow along with me and here we go. Okay, so our objective for today is to be able to solve multi-step equations by using the concepts of balance and isolation. Now recently we've been doing some lessons with balance scales and we've actually been solving equations but you might not have made that connection. So here we go. Okay, so when we use the balance scale strategy, you can see this balance scale here. A couple of things that we wanna keep in mind. Um, remember, math is like a game. So we're, we're always trying to win the game. So in these balance scale problems, we're trying to keep the scale balanced and we're trying to find the right answer, right? We're trying to win the game. So when we do the balance scale strategy, a couple of things that we need to keep in mind is we need to always keep the scale balanced. Right? That's the most important thing. And if it's balanced, that means both sides are equal and both sides are fair. So real important concepts there. Um, and then another strategy of the, uh, the balance scale strategy, another uh, real important concept is whatever you do to one side of the scale, you must also do to the other side. So if you're going to take gold nuggets off of one side, then you have to be able to take gold nuggets off the other side. If you're going to take weighted plates off of one side, then you better have enough weight on the other side of the scale to also uh, take something off and keep it balanced because it has to be equal. Whatever we do to one side, we have to be able to do to the other side. So let's go ahead and try this example here. Here's a real simple one. So in this example, this is a review example, we have 20 pounds of weight, like a weight room 20 pound plate, on the left side of our scale. And then over here we have five gold nuggets. So we don't really need to take anything off the scale. Um, we only have gold nuggets on one side and we have weight on the other. And so the goal is to figure out how much does one gold nugget weigh? They all weigh the same. So how much does one weigh? And uh, so one way to do that is we could do 20 divided by five. There's five gold nuggets. And so each gold nugget is going to weigh four pounds. And we would write that, um, since we're talking about nuggets, we would write N equals four, N equals four. Okay, so each gold nugget weighs four pounds. So a real simple one um, as a review. So 20 pounds, five gold nuggets. Okay, let's try another example. So in this example, now we, a little more sophisticated, here's our little gold miner down here in the, the bottom. He, he's an old guy, he needs some help. Okay, so here are five gold nuggets, and along with those gold nuggets on the left side, right, this is the left side of the scale, we have three pounds of weight. We know that whatever this equals and this, we know that together they equal 28 pounds because the scale is balanced, right? The scale's not lopsided, it's not heavier over here, this would be further down, and this would be up. So we know that the scale is balanced, so the strategy here is to isolate the nuggets. We wanna get the nuggets all by themselves. So that means we need to get rid of these three pounds. So if I take three pounds off of this side, I also have to take three pounds off of the right side. So if I'm taking it off the left side, I have to get rid of three pounds over here. So these are gone, that's out, we can take that out. But if I have 28 pounds and I take three off, that's gonna leave me with 25 pounds. Okay, so now we have five gold nuggets. I'm just gonna abbreviate instead of redrawing them. Five gold nuggets is equal to 25 pounds. How much is each nugget? Five times what makes 25? Each gold nugget would be five pounds. So five pound nuggets, right? Over here, you can see in the, the railroad cart, these nugget gold nuggets are pretty big, okay? So five gold nuggets. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, try a third example. Okay, now we don't, we don't see any gold nuggets. Whoa, hang on here. Okay, so there are actually gold nuggets. Remember, 
on the previous problem we abbreviated. So these three gold nuggets right here, three in, and this gold nugget, those are really nuggets, right? So they're really there, we're just abbreviating. So we have three gold nuggets on the left side, 16 pounds of weight, and then one gold nugget. So I'm gonna go back to the abbreviation. Okay, so if we have nuggets on the left side, we also have nuggets on the right side, we want to try to get the nuggets only on one side. So to do that, I'm just gonna take this nugget off. Right, I'm gonna get rid of this guy. So if I take that nugget off, then that means I have to take one nugget off here. So he's completely gone. And if I take one nugget from the left side, then that means I'm now left with two nuggets. And if we redraw, we have two nuggets is equal to 16 pounds. So two times what makes 16, or you could think 16 divided by two, because these nuggets weigh the same. And that's gonna be each nugget weighs eight pounds. Each nugget weighs eight pounds. So remember, we originally started with three nuggets, and I showed you those three nuggets we just abbreviated. So now we're going to move to the next problem, but it has an abbreviation again. Okay, so now we have three gold nuggets. They're there. Just imagine three gold nuggets and 22 pounds of weight. Think of a, a weight room plate, 22 pounds. And over here is 28 pounds of weighted plates and one nugget. So we wanna do the same thing. We wanna start taking things off the scale so that it will be easier to look at. So I notice that uh, I have 22 pounds and I have 28, so I can take weight off of both. Can I take 28 pounds off of both sides? I have 28 pounds here, but I don't have 28 pounds here. So I can only, the most I can take is 22. And then I could take 22 out of here and I can take one nugget and I can take one nugget. If I try to take all three of these off, I don't have three nuggets on this side to match that. So here we go. I'm going to take the 22 pounds off, and that's going to leave me with just six pounds on the right side. 28 minus 22 leaves me with six pounds. And then I'm going to take one nugget off of both sides. So this is completely gone, and now I'm left with two nuggets. Okay, so this is gone. This is down to six. This is gone. So now I'll let the dust settle and we can rewrite our problem. And now we're left with two nuggets is equal to six pounds. And hopefully you can see that each nugget weighs three pounds. Okay, so it just took a couple of steps of taking some stuff off the left side, matching that by taking stuff off the right side. <clears throat> And now we're able to see three pounds. Okay, so that is called the balance scale strategy. But now I'm gonna introduce a new strategy for you. This is a more traditional way to solve equations. And um, I call this, uh, I have a name for it. You probably have not heard this strategy. It's something I came up with. And I call this the birthday boy strategy. So before I show you the birthday boy strategy, I, I want you to, we'll just pause on math for a second. And I want you to imagine a birthday party for a little child. It could be a birthday boy, or maybe you can remember uh, for the girls in the room, maybe you can remember a birthday party that you had when you were just a little person, right? Think of like a five-year-old or six-year-old and, and a birthday party. So most of us have either had a birthday party like that or been to a birthday party. And, and you know what typically happens there. You if you're in school, you have probably a few classmates that are your kind of best friends that your parents let you invite. And then if there are some neighbors um, um, nearby, some in your neighborhood that you are, your, fam your family is friends with, so the, the neighborhood friends get to come to the party. And then if there are um, older brothers and sisters, if there are um, aunts and uncles, right, some relatives, maybe, maybe some grandparents, and uh, so there's a lot of people that are at the party and uh, there might be music at the party. It's definitely gonna be food. Maybe there's a pinata. Um, maybe they play some games. The children like to play different games or decorate cupcakes, right? So they have a great time. The, the birthday boy, um, he, at some point, you're gonna sing happy birthday to him. He gets to blow out his candles. That's an exciting thing. Um, and then everyone gets a piece of cake and then he opens the gifts. 
Um, but eventually it's time for everyone to go home, right? They might have a jumper, but eventually these parties last for, uh, you know, three, four, five hours. But then there's kind of a set time, right? You get an invitation and it says, you know, the party starts at one and party's over at five or six. And, and that kind of means it's time to go home. So thanks for coming, but we'd like you to go home now, right? We want to have some time with the birthday boy. So um, think about it. Who usually leaves the party first? So these type of parties, well, it would be the people that aren't quite as close to the birthday boy. Maybe it's the classmates, the friends from school, or maybe it's the neighborhood friends, right? They'll usually be the first ones to leave. And then the relatives stay a little bit longer, right? The aunts and uncles, but eventually aunts and uncles and cousins, if they live somewhere else, then they're, they're going to drive home. And maybe it's the grandparents. Uh, they might be the last ones to stay. But eventually, it, you're just left with mom and dad, right? So everyone has gone home. Okay, so now, I want the reason I told that story, I know it was kind of a long story, I wanted you to imagine, envision a birthday party. So maybe you have um, a favorite memory of a birthday party. So when we do uh, the birthday boy strategy, so here's just a regular, um, this is called a simple two-step equation, multi-step equation. Okay, so I want you to think of a birthday boy, and that birthday boy is the variable, okay, or the variable is the birthday boy, all right? So this is the birthday boy. So anytime we're using this strategy, and you think of these problems, I want you to think of the variable as the birthday boy. Okay, now I want you to think who is closest to the birthday boy. So what value is closest, all right? Oh, the other thing I wanted to point out before we go there is this equal sign right here, um, this is like a fence. This is like your backyard fence, okay? This is really important. This is really important concept. So go ahead and draw that backyard fence. Now, here's the birthday boy. You can see this two is really close, right? So this is probably a close relative. And then four is at the party. So anything on the left side over here is at the party. And then this 10 is kind of like that grumpy neighbor that no one really likes. And so you don't invite them, right? So the party's going on over here. And 10, is, he's kind of like looking over the fence. He's like, well, what's going on over there? Turn that music down, right? That's the grumpy neighbor. So he didn't get invited. So just remember that, okay? So the 10 is not at the party. It's really important that you remember that, okay? So the two is at the party, the four is at the party, and this is the birthday boy, okay? All right, and here's your fence, all right? You gotta make sure you have that fence. Okay, so when the party's over, all the invited guests need to leave the party. So eventually, this two is gonna leave, this four is going to leave. And remember, 10 did not get invited to the party. So 10's not there. So you don't have to worry about 10 yet, okay? Only the invited guests. Okay, now, um, and you're filling in your notes as we go along, okay? All right, so these are the invited guests, okay? And then over here, kind of feel sorry for him, but he's not invited, all right? He kind of is a grumpy old guy, so he's not invited, okay? All right, so you got your invited guests and your not invited people, okay? All right, so here we go. Um, now, what we want to do is we want to isolate the variable by himself. So if we go with the little story of the birthday boy, remember, if you're five years old, you're running around, you're playing in the jumper, you're playing tag with your friends and the pinata and the music, and, and eventually you get wiped out, right? And that's why people need to go home, because A, they don't live with you, not everyone lives with you, and B, the birthday boy is kind of wiped out. He needs to kind of quiet down and, you know, eventually take a bath and, you know, and his birthday day is going to come to an end. So we need to isolate that variable, okay? All right, so um, here we go. Continuing with the birthday boy strategy, I just couldn't fit everything on the same PowerPoint slide. There's our fence, right? So the guests that are closest to the birthday boy like your relatives, right? Here's the family. Like the relatives are going to stay at the party the longest, okay? So now if we think about, here's our birthday boy. We've already said two is closer. So the ones that are closest are gonna stay the longest. So the last one to leave the party is gonna be that two. The four is gonna leave 
earlier, right? Just like the classmates and the neighbors, they're gonna leave the party a little bit earlier, okay? So if the party ends at five, they're gonna leave around five and the relatives will stay a little bit longer, okay? So now, how do we have them leave the party, okay? And eventually this is all gonna make sense to you. You might be thinking, what in the world, Mr. Mason, you've been teaching too long, what is going on? Trust me, okay, this strategy works, all right? Um, and my students, if you, if you have a little bit of a sense of humor and you don't take life too seriously, you're gonna actually enjoy this, okay? All right, so here we go. So the question is, which number is closest to the variable, right? And so I've already told you the two is closest to the variable. The two is closest. So the two is gonna stay the longest, okay? All right, so here's our same problem. There's our fence. Okay, so now when the guests leave the party, when it's time to go home, they have to use a rule called the rule of inverse operations. Okay, inverse operations. What in the world is that? Okay, so let me explain. To you. So who's gonna leave this party first? Well, we already said the four is gonna leave first, right? Two's real close. This is like grandma, grandma's gonna stay longer. 10, that's the grumpy old neighbor, he didn't get invited. So four is gonna leave first, okay? So if four is an adding friend, right? This is a plus four, then we wanna do the opposite. We want to subtract to let him leave. And that's what's called an inverse operation, okay? These are kind of like two sides of a coin, right? Like heads or tails. They're still the same coin, right? So if it's an adding friend, then you do the other side of the coin, the inverse. You do the subtraction. If it's a subtracting friend, what do you think? If it's a subtracting friend, then you're going to add, right? That's the other side of the coin, right? So these go together. Adding, then you're gonna subtract. If it's a subtracting guest, then you're gonna add. Okay, you gotta remember these rules. I hate having a bunch of rules, but these you gotta remember. Okay, all right, so here we go. Rule of inverse operations, we're gonna continue. If it's a multiplying guest, then you're gonna divide, right? These are kind of two sides of a coin, multiply and divide. And if it's a dividing guest, then you're going to multiply. All right, okay, so now let's go ahead and solve this problem. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. Okay, so there's our birthday boy, there's our fence, Right, so we're going back, this is back at the, the top of uh, page two, and we're gonna solve example five. So here's our birthday boy, here's our fence. Okay, so who is gonna leave this party first? It ain't the 10, he's not at the party. So don't say 10, he's not at the party. This is grandma, she's gonna stay longer. So four is going to leave. So four is an adding friend, so we are going to subtract four to have four leave. And remember, whatever you do to one side of the problem, you have to do to the other side. So if we're gonna subtract four, you have to subtract four on this side. Okay, so these are gonna be canceled out. Those are canceled. Now over here, we have 10 minus four is six, and now we have two X is equal to six. Okay, here's our birthday boy. So here's grandma, she's a two. Now it's time for grandma, grandma, it's time to go home. Okay, so how are we gonna get her to go home? She's a multiplying, right? This is two times X. So what's the other side of the coin of multiply? That's right, divide. We wanna divide by two. So we need grandma to go home. So we're gonna divide both sides by two. Those cancel. We have six divided by two. X is equal to three, all right? Oops, sorry, it went too fast. X is equal to three. That's it, there's your answer, all right? So this is the birthday boy strategy. So we had an add friend, went home by subtracting. We had a multiply, here's a relative, grandma, so we had to divide to get her to go home. Okay, let's try another example. Okay, so find your birthday boy. There he is right there. Draw your fence. Okay, now think. Who got invited to the party? Well, six is a real close uh, relative. Negative three got invited to the party. Here's the fence, right? The party's over here. 
27 did not get invited to the party. Remember, 27 is kind of looking over the fence. What's going on over there? All right. Okay, so 27 is not at the party. Okay, so who's going to leave the party first? Who's closest, right? Closest stays longer. If you're closer, you stay longer. So six stays longer. So the negative three. So if this is a subtracting friend. How do we get that subtracting friend out of there? We're going to add three. If it's a minus three, we're going to do the opposite, the inverse operation. So we're going to add three. We have to do it over here. We've got to stay balanced. So these are going to be gone. And then we have 27 plus three is 30. Bring this down. Okay, now here's, here's Uncle Joe, right? He's real close. Birthday boy really likes Uncle Joe. He's his favorite uncle. But it's time for Uncle Joe to go home. All right, so he's a multiplying friend. So we're going to have to divide by six. Those cancel. And x is equal to five. Okay, x is equal to five. All right, got a handful more of examples to do. Okay, so now a little different. Okay, so here, here we had a number, a coefficient right next to the x. Okay, so this is six times x, right? This is Uncle Joe. All right, so now this one, here's our birthday boy. So find your birthday boy. Draw your fence, okay? So think who did not get invited, 10. So we're not moving 10, 10's not gonna move. So who's at the party? Well, the birthday boy's at the party. The five is downstairs, and then you've got the four, okay? Now, who is closest to the birthday boy? That would be this five. Five is closest, right? It's, it's downstairs. This is kind of like, everyone's kind of got that crazy old aunt, like Aunt Hazel, and she's like wandering around under the table. It's like, Aunt Hazel, like, come on, come back up here, right? So everyone's got an Aunt Hazel or something like that, kind of a crazy old aunt, like, come on up. She's getting a little senile, but she's still a relative, okay? So here's four, so it's time for four to go home. So four is gonna leave the party first. If you're closer to the relative, you stay longer. Okay, so let's have four leave. It's an adding friend, so we wanna subtract. So we're gonna subtract four from both sides, and that's gonna give us x divided by five is equal to six, 10 minus four, six. But we still need to get x by itself. We need to get the birthday boy some alone time by himself. So Aunt Hazel's downstairs. She's dividing, she's down here dividing, okay? So if she's a dividing guest, how do we get rid of her? We do the flip side of the coin, which is to multiply. So we gotta multiply both sides. So I'm gonna multiply, these are gonna cancel, and then I'm gonna multiply six times five. So those cancel. There's nothing over here to cancel this, right? But I had to multiply here, so I have to multiply here. So six times five is 30, so we get x is equal to 30, okay? All right, so once again, this was Aunt Hazel, little senile, she's downstairs, but she's still a relative, we still love her, so she stays until the end, and then we cancel, we have her cancel out, okay? All right, getting a little trickier. Okay, so now I see 8H, right? And we could think of terms of, uh, hamburgers if you wanted to, but we've got 8H and minus 2H. And then here we have a plus seven. Now, we've got two different H's. So remember collecting like terms? Oh, let's put our fence in there first. Oh, there's our fence. Remember, 31's not at the party. So don't go move in 31. But remember combining like terms or collecting like terms? We need to combine those. We can't start the problem until we combine our variables. So here's 8H minus 2H. So let's combine those. That's going to be 6H, right? 8H, take away 2H, 6H plus 7 is equal to 31. Now we're at the birthday party. Okay, so here's your birthday boy. 
Here's uh, Nana again, or Grandma, right? Here she is real close, Grandma six. And then here's our neighbor, plus seven. So we want plus seven to leave first. So we're gonna subtract seven. 31 minus seven is 24. And now here's Grandma, she's multiplying. So we're gonna do the opposite flip side of the coin. So if she's a multiplying, we wanna do the inverse, which is to divide, and that cancels. We have H is equal to four. There's your solution, H is equal to four. Okay, all right, we got three more examples. All right, holy moly, here we go. Holy shnikes, what do we got going on? All right, so we got this number downstairs. This is a little crazy. Okay, so here's our birthday boy right here. Let's go ahead and put our fence in. And so now this is a little different because here's a close relative, real close to the birthday boy. Here's a friend, but this eight downstairs is kind of like blocking the door, right? Like no one can leave the party. I call these downstairs Dannys. And if your name's Danny, I, I don't mean to offend you. I just call these downstairs Dannys, right? They're, they're just, they're, devious they're disruptive right they're just trying to cause problems so we have to get rid of this downstairs danny because he's blocking the door no one else can leave the party the three can't leave the minus two can't leave this two's not invited but we got to get rid of this downstairs danny so he's a dividing downstairs danny so if he's dividing how are we going to get rid of him what's the flip side of divide okay there's your birthday boy so the flip side of divide is to multiply. So I'm going to cancel those eights, right? So this was a dividing eight, and I'm gonna cancel it by a multiplying eight, opposite uh, inverse operation. And then I'm gonna multiply over here, so this is gone. So I'm gonna be left with three X minus two is equal to 16. Here's your birthday boy. Here's your relative, real close, closer relative, stay longer. And then now this is a minus two. So how am I gonna get rid of that? I'm gonna add two and we get three X is equal to 18. Now here's your real close relative. It's a dividing, or I'm sorry, it's a multiply. So we wanna do the inverse, which would be to divide. So we wanna divide both sides by three and X is equal to six. Okay. All right. So that was a tricky one. You might want to, hopefully you're printing out your notes and hopefully you've got these in front of you. So go ahead and just make a note that if you have a downstairs Danny like this, he's blocking the door. We got to deal with him. We got to get rid of him right away. We don't want him causing problems at the party. So we got to get rid of him. All right, here we go. Two more problems. Okay. So on this one, Remember the birthday boy is the variable, but we got a variable here and we have a variable over here. So the first thing that we got to do is I see these parentheses, we got a little distributive property. So um, just like at a birthday party, sometimes there's dancing. Well, we're gonna do the boom chicka boom dance here. So we're gonna start off, there's our fence, right? There's our fence. This time our neighbor that's not invited, he's over here on this side. Okay, so let's start off with a boom. So four times A, and then a chick-a-boom, and let's go ahead and rewrite that. So we got four times A is four A, four times negative two is negative eight, and now we have to combine like terms. So four A plus two A, we've got to put those together, and that's going to give us 17, right? This hasn't changed, equals six A minus eight. Okay, so here's the birthday boy. Who's closer to the birthday boy? The six. So if you're closer, you stay at the party longer, right? So we got to get minus eight out of there. So we're going to add eight to both sides. And then that's going to, these get canceled. Let's do that. And we have 25 is equal to 6a. Okay, so now this is a multiplying. So the opposite inverse, the inverse operation is to divide by six, those cancel. Our final answer is 25 over six. 
25 over 6. Now, I put this problem in here specifically because sometimes when we get a final answer, it doesn't come out nicely, right? 25 over 6. This is called an improper fraction. You don't have to convert it. Maybe in seventh or eighth grade, you had to change this, but this is fine. You can leave this like this in high school. Improper fractions are okay. But 25 divided by 6, it does not go nicely, right? So if, it, if they don't want to play nice, just leave them, right? That's the rule. They don't want to play nice, leave them alone, okay? All right, here we go. One last problem. I know you're probably falling asleep by now. My children say my voice puts them to sleep. Okay, so here we go. Last problem. I see a W. This looks like my birthday boy. We're going to put the fence in here. No variable, no variable. Okay, so I think we're going to probably have to combine these. Okay, so let's put the fence in and let's combine those. So 41, we're playing scoreboard, right? 41 to the positive team, 32 to the negative team. So the positives won. How much did they win by? They won by nine. Okay, all right, so now we've got, here's our birthday boy, here's your relative, closest to the birthday boy is gonna stay longer. Here's a plus nine, this is an adding friend, so we wanna subtract, subtract nine from both sides, cancel there. Now, this is where some of you kind of goof up. This is six to the negative team and nine to the negative team, please do not write a positive answer down here. Okay, I will, I'll be sad if you do that because we've already worked on that, right? This is negative six and this is negative nine and that's gonna make negative 15. And a step right here, this is where a lot of you goof up, okay? Just a real basic and then you're gonna mess the problem up. Okay, so now we've got 15 W is equal to negative 15. Now this is a multiplying friend, so we want to divide by 15. I'm gonna cancel there. So 15 divided by 15, that's gonna be one, but there's a negative here. So our final answer is negative one, okay? All right, so remember the rules um, for leaving the party, right? So whoever is closest to the birthday boy stays longer, like relatives, like grandparents. And um, if you leave the party, if you're an adding guest, then you do the inverse, you're gonna subtract. If you're a subtracting guest, then you add. If you're a multiplying guest, then you're gonna divide to leave. And if you're a dividing guest, you're gonna multiply. Okay, all right, so those were 11 examples. Go ahead and write yourself one important tip, something that will help you remember. Maybe I taught you something new today. Um, I'm the one that came up with this birthday boy strategy, so you probably haven't seen it anywhere else. That's a Mr. Mason original, all right? And uh, if you do have a question or something that you're not understanding, go ahead and write that as well. And then you can, um, you can send me an email or a message on that. Okay, hopefully um, that made sense. We're gonna continue to practice that. Usually the first time through on something like that, it's a little confusing, but then the second time and the third time and the fourth time, then it starts to make sense. So if it was a little confusing, remember you can always go back and watch the video. You can pause, rewind. It's the nice thing about these videos, okay? All right, we'll talk to you later, and we will, um, we'll see you later. All right, let me stop this video. Okay, see you guys.